Okay, good afternoon everyone. On behalf of the ALTI 2020 Fall Forum Organization Team, I would like to welcome you all. The ALT Fall 2020 Forum is organized in collaboration with Zaid University and the Higher Colleges of Technology. My name is Imad Mahavza, and I will be moderating this session in virtual room until 1 p.m. The speaker will be speaking for 15 to 20 minutes max, followed by five minutes discussion. You are welcome to write your question in the chat box function during the presentation. As the moderator, I will collate your question and post them to the presenter in the last five minutes of the session. I will give a polite reminder to the speaker of, of the time remaining after 15 minutes of the talk has passed. I would also like to remind you that our distinguished session, sorry, I will also, I would like to remind you that our distinguished keynote speaker will bring the forum to a close from 2 p.m. to 3.20 p.m. in virtual room six. Please be sure to join the keynote session. Without any further ado, please allow me to welcome Mustabshira Siddiqui from, uh, uh, from, um, from Saudi Arabia to deliver her session on the impact of remote learning around the globe, mastering the future of e-learning. Please introduce yourself. Thank you so much for the introduction, uh, Dr. Imad uh, Mahavza. I am Dr. Mustafshira Siddiqui. I am uh, uh, talking from KSA, Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, representing the University, Taiba University. I am an assistant professor in the Department of English, and I will be talking about the idea of impact of remote learning and how we have to master the future of e-learning due to the surge of uh, COVID-19 in the present era and how we all are sitting in the comfort of our homes and teaching and in the same way, how we can master this idea of e-learning. Now, I will move on to the first slide, uh, which is the contents. Uh, the first thing I would like to talk about is remote learning, globalization, and digitalization. And the second thing which I will be talking about is remote learning during COVID-19, which we just cannot eliminate from our talks when we are talking nowadays or presenting today in today's era. And then I will be talking about how remote learning is in the, fu is the future of education, how remote learning will become a future of uh, this era since we have uh, become a global village by connected with each other on uh, online and how we have become, how we are actually appropriating the culture of e-learning. Then I will be moving on to remote learning tools, how we can make it more comfortable for ourselves, how we can uh, more and retain more and more information, and how we can make this uh, time at home more and more um, productive for our kids and for ourselves. And then the final slide will talk about the future of e-learning how e-learning or internet learning, or how this online learning has become our future. Now, remote learning and globalization and digitalization is something, like I told you, the, the entire world has become a global village. Now, remote learning is simply put where the students and the educator are not physically present in the traditional classroom environment, that is, uh, Remote learning, what is, the, what is the idea, what is remote learning? It provides an opportunity for students and teachers to remain connected and engaged with the content while working from their homes. Through its innovative technologies and flexible delivery, remote learning, also known as distance education or e-learning, has gained its well-deserved prominence. In this era of digitalization, technology has become a global connector. It has put educational resources literally at our fingertips. We can learn from educators around the globe, interact with peers from all corners of the globe. The list goes on and on. Remote learning during COVID-19. 
now what how how we are dealing with the idea of remote learning now in the middle of march the education world changed in the blink of an eye students living rooms bedrooms and kitchens became their classrooms parents became co-teachers and tech support and the internet became a lifeline to learning during the corona virus pandemic remote education has become the go to learning method and as as a result a wide range of distance learning tools new methods of assessment with learning management software resources to promote inclusive learning for differently able learners have been adopted remote learning offers engaging methods to learn for instance apps and games so students retain a lot of what they had learned Remote learning offers more freedom to learners, puts them in charge of their education, not to mention the fact that it saves a ton of time and money spent on commuting, expensive textbooks, as most of the study material is online now. Educational providers also benefit from saving on campus facilities, extra staff, services and physical materials. Now how remote learning is the future of education in contrast to traditional education where participants are forced to stick to rigid schedules and specific learning processes remote education gives its students the freedom to engage with digest and analyze course content in ways that work best for them in this way it also promotes self discipline remote learning enables learners to learn anywhere any time that's very important and also very essential for us nowadays time when we have to fix our timings according to the present era as a remote learning as remote learning offers flexibility uh, flexibility to juggle other life commitments pursue other career or educational opportunities while completing their coursework it motivates the learners to complete their education instead of dropping out which is something which happens a lot when we are uh, offline learning because we couldn't cope with the jobs and the study together at the same time remote education has some downsides too for instance technical and connectivity issues isolation of students low motivation levels resulting in poor performance and procrastination high dropout rate that also happens because of some people could not join from their places because of uh, the poor uh, connectivity connection which we have to work on as a, as the global village to make the connectivity reach to every single individual or student now this is very important when we talk about remote learning how we can access more and more uh, information and how we can access our life uh, with a more and more productive schedule so that we can become uh, more and more uh, adept into this uh, e learning process so for that we have this this uh, remote learning tools and the the, uh, the first thing which i would like to tell you is that mooc's massive online courses uh they have become very uh good for us to uh see how the world looks like like odemi like codec or edx or coursera skillshare uh, udacity all these uh online uh access material has made the world more and more accessible to every single individual whether you are sitting in ksa whether you are sitting in india whether you are sitting sitting in uae or america or canada you can access any university any time any course any time that's for the education uh, another thing which is very important is the video lessons now uh, i will i will also tell you how you can access or utilize mooc they provide a life changing opportunity for those who are less advantaged and have limited access to education whether it be to gain credits degrees or diploma or to learn a new skill for getting a raise finding a new job or starting a new business 
MOOCs are the one top solution to all these issues as they offer quality education from the comfort of your home. Then the video lessons, another very, very important thing in nowadays generation for this 21st century generation who is so addicted to the videos nowadays. The video lessons have emerged as the most used and efficient means of education. Videos grab the learner's attention in a manner other mediums cannot. Video addresses different learning styles of visual, auditory, and kinesthetic learners and consequently maximizes retention. And we have all these kind of videos, lessons from Google Meet, Zoom, Skype, YouTube recordings, video recordings, all type of synchronous and asynchronous uh, video lessons. Then third thing, which is very uh, much into in nowadays, that is podcasts. So uh, podcasts, also known as the radio of the internet, are quite easy to access. Students can listen for longer duration than they generally watch or read, as they can listen to podcasts while performing routine tasks, the students can even create their own podcasts, including questions, discussions, presentations, or projects. Podcasts are a boon for the visually impaired and students with reading disabilities. And they are very famous as Tech Talks or National Public Radio, NPR. Then the next tool, which is very important again, is M Learning, that is mobile learning. M learning, also known as, known as mobile learning, has become very prevalent in the current era as almost everyone has a mobile phone with a mobile device. We can access millions of educational websites, apps, games, learning software, and whatnot. Mobile learning is easily accessible, promotes self-learning, and has higher completion rates as the content presented in the mobile platform is chunk-sized and concise. And we have these apps like Kindle and Audible. Uh, Kindle is good for reading anything on, on your phone. Uh, and it's a very good app. And Audible is another very nice app to use for uh, listening uh, to any kind of uh, educational um, program or any book. And we have educational games. Uh, you know, we are living in the age where the children and the students are very much addicted to the games online. So let's introduce the educational games to them. Uh, they are contrary to the popular belief that games are detrimental to students' development. Game-based learning is specifically beneficial for children with attention disorders. Games can be used to engage students in the lesson test, their knowledge, boost their ability to think out of the box, and analytical skills. The badges and trophies offered when a level of game is completed can act as a great motivational booster. So in most of the times, the children are very much into games. So we can make games their education. Then we have another thing that is educational apps. From learning a new language, solving arithmetic problems, learning via flashcards, to assessing knowledge, there is an app for everything. Now, this is something very famous dialogue uh, by uh, one of the UAE member I watch uh, on, on live, Khalid Al-Amiri, says there is an app for everything. So I just thought to include him here. So um, educational app. Uh, now, apps are probably the best tool for students to use their free time as they are combination of education and entertainment. Most apps also enable the learners to keep track of their progress too. Then we have learning management systems like Microsoft, uh, Teams, Moodle, Blackboard, Google Classroom, and Edmodo. Uh, LMS is a software that is designed specifically to create, distribute, and manage the delivery of educational content. Typically, a learning management system provides an instructor with a way to create and deliver content, monitor students, participation, and assess student performance. A learning management system may also provide students with the ability to use interactive features, such as threaded discussions, video conferencing, and discussion forums. In the ongoing scenario, learning management systems have emerged as a virtual classroom. 
The last thing is radio, TV, and printed study materials are old school means of distance education and can be used to teach unprivileged students, especially in the rural area. Now, the final slide will talk about the future of e learning. Okay, I am just wrapping up. This is the last slide. <laughs> okay. The future of e learning. A hybrid of in-person lessons and distance learning, blended learning is one of the many proposed models for the future of technology assistant classroom. Not all households are equally prepared to move on to distance learning with a personal device and a stable internet connection as a necessary requirement not to fall behind. In this scenario, using both distance and in-class education as a learning model will make sure that every student has access to education. Now, number two is bots. Bots are something that can assist the students to great extent as they are available 24-7. They can answer the students' queries about the course module, lesson plans, assignments, and deadlines. They can monitor the learning progress, provide personalized feedback to students, and analyze the students' learning needs, and recommend learning content to them accordingly. Snatchbot and Bostify are some well-known educational bots. And number three is social media, which we are all the time. Lack of social interaction is often cited as a downside of remote learning, though with a wide range of online technologies now available, peer-to-peer -peer social media channels such as Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, YouTube, WhatsApp can be used to join educational communities and learn from peers around the globe. Number four is very important, that is practical subjects, which uh, is a big thing uh, nowadays, uh, that they have introduced uh, the practical subjects online. That's a big thing because we need labs for them. Like chemistry, medicine, engineering, music are almost impossible to teach remotely. This is where virtual labs come in. They can be used to teach anatomy, medicine, labster is one such science virtual lab. Another thing which is very important is though you don't have everything in the laptop or phone all the time, so cloud-based e-learning has been introduced. You know, sometimes you lost your phone, your laptop, it's corrupted, something happened, and you lost everything. For that, cloud is there. Cloud-based e-learning is online learning that takes place on the cloud, a virtual space that is not tied to any one computer. These days, cloud-based learning management systems are becoming quite popular as they encourage learning on the go and are cost effective and easy to maintain. Then the final thing is virtual reality, where we are right now. We are in virtual reality. In traditional classrooms, teachers are using only images and auditory materials to teach concepts, but there is only so much students can understand from pictures and explanations when it comes to complex concepts, theories, and subjects. With VR, students can easily explore different realities and angles of things they are learning instead of hearing, reading, and just seeing a two-dimensional picture. They get to learn that material through experience. Statistics confirm that students remember 90% of the material if it is learned through experience. VR can be used to give virtual educational tours to museums, archaeological sites, wildlife parks, and so on. Google Expeditions and Discovery Education are the leading VR tour providers. That is virtual reality. The concluding, I am concluding now, the students and teachers alike have discovered the widespread benefits of distance learning convenience, flexibility, efficiency. In today's fast-paced life, remote education has made learning easier. The future might bring a complete shift to remote learn or we might become <clears throat> learners in our future. Okay. I hope you have <clears throat> Yes, we did. Thank you, um, Dr. Mustafshira. We have a couple of questions here. They are related, two related questions from uh, Mr. Tariq Al-Samhouri, saying, um, is, that, is the quality of Internet tools the same all over the world? How to overcome this? And a related one, how do we deal with this in rural areas? Is it fair for yeah. them? Yeah, that's very true. That's what I talked about. That it's a difficult thing for those uh, uh, students from rural areas and bad connectivity, which we co constantly face for our only students also who belong to villages. 
that they couldn't connect on time for that what we can do is we can use the tool of recording you know so we can recall the sessions or we can print the sessions and or we can uh, also there's one more thing which i was thinking that what we can now start doing now since we have been online for a while that we start giving these lessons on tv you know so tv is uh, working everywhere it's a satellite thing it's not uh, related with internet or uh, uh, you know they have to be on time so what i thought was that uh, uh, you know now we should start giving start start a channel you know from from every educational institutions they should introduce a channel like suppose i am in taiba university so taiba university if they introduce their channel you know on on tv and then they begin their lessons all the recordings of the sessions on tv so all the students can benefit because tv is available everywhere it does not belong to uh, you know this idea of um, uh, internet or connectivity or time bound you just watch tv and i think it will be be best thing because we are in the uh, in the world where everybody is watching tv you know tv is the best tool i think we should you know the idea of tv should be utilized this is what i think for those rural area things because i face a lot the same problem with my students thank you dr mustabshiram another question from uh, mr richard nelson what lessons have been learned from remote learning that could be reflected back into the blended learning classroom post pandemic yeah that what how we can make it uh, blended learning uh, that's a very good question uh, in fact you know uh, i think blended learning should be there uh, like uh, you uh, you uh, make one day that okay this day there is going to be a conference okay and you are going to uh, actually uh, uh, cover all those aspects which have been uh, told in that class you conference for every single uh, course and uh, that day it can be that everybody is present and watching and seeing meeting the students it actually encourages social uh, you know interaction we are not doing social distancing we are doing physical distancing i believe uh we should not follow social distancing it will eliminate us from the world and it will also impact our mental health you know so we cannot be socially distanced with from people we should be always talking and socially uh, interacting uh, yet uh, following the physical distance so that could okay. be the blended thing okay great thank you and another question from also mr richard in elson who is going to be our uh, speaker also at 1:30 today do you feel there is a place for augmented reality in learning and what issues are there in making its use a reality yeah that's very true sometimes what happens is nowadays when uh, even when we are talking and we are in front of each other uh, you know it's uh, it, it actually gives you a feel uh, that you are away and you just cannot meet you know this feeling of uh this augmented reality that you cannot meet uh, in person whenever you want it actually uh, impacts our um idea of uh, communicating but how we can uh, overcome this problem is that we can share more and more information with each other we we can use the video sessions we can use more and more uh, interactions we are uh virtual reality using virtual reality tools and then uh, we can uh, you know post pandemic you know uh, it's not going away it's not like the, you know we start talking about post pandemic scenario i don't think uh, right now we are in the situation of talking about post pandemic era you know because we don't know uh, how uh, our uh, mind will be developed by then when the pandemic is over you know it's not going anywhere right now it's uh, even if it is not in ksa it is somewhere in america if it is not in america it is somewhere in india so you just cannot say that it's going away so we cannot just think of post pandemic right now at all i can't imagine what will happen post pandemic i don't know what we will become by post pandemic era so i cannot okay. say what will okay, happen okay great thank you dr mustafshir siddiqui for a wonderful presentation and for all the interesting questions and be a uh, feedback our next uh, uh, session will be starting at 1 pm today